Make sure my screen is sharing. All right, so everything should be up and going. This is going to be a very quick but effective, very effective Facebook Live. So, um, okay. If you're coming in, hit your, um, share this on your timeline. Hit the watch party button, you know, make it a watch party. Do what you got to do to help get this information out here. Uh, let me know if you can hear me too. Um, you coming in, give me the thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear me um, so that I can get going. I'm going to also share this on YouTube. So. You all coming in on Facebook Live, let me know if you can hear me. This is going to be quick, 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 but powerful, right? Thank you, thank you for the thumbs up. Hit the watch party. Um, you know, you can share this on your timeline. You enter credit repair. Are you advocated? Are you about to increase your credit and cash flow 2019? You definitely want to share this information with others, uh, it'll help improve your, thank you so much, Ms. Ransom. It will help in, improve your credibility, right? So the number one thing, thank you for the digital love, for some reason. This is my Mississippi accent, I don't know. People like it when I say that. So for some reason, um, there is a lot of information out there, right, on credit it, it repair, uh, improvement. Why, why shouldn't it be, right? Uh, credit is a three-digit number that can control, that does control your life. It not only controls your interest rates or the lack thereof, but it also controls your insurance rates, your premium, right? And we know with the new Ultra FICO score, now it's even going to include your checking uh, uh, activities along with your checking account and your bill payment history. So the number one thing people do that will damage their credit uh, report or score more than it will help them is they request contract bearing their signature, right? They request a contract, right? I wanted a blue ink and I have made videos on this uh, before I came to this knowledge that, you know, request, request a contract bearing your signature. Your signature must be in blue ink, your wet signature, or hey, your, um, a video footage of me walking in, uh, agreeing to a contract or agreement. So you're coming in, hit like, hit share, with some digital love. That's the most damaging thing that you can do. Why? Because it can serve for debt validation, but it's not complete and absolute proof, right? It's not complete and absolute truth. What I proof, what I mean by that, if you look at this court uh, law or, or date or what happened, I have Spares versus uh, Bremen. Um, this was in Indiana, 2001. And the judge ruled, um, what happened was the, in this case, the original uh, con creditor, right, actually had a validation of that. They had the contract bearing the signature, right? And the judge ruled that this is contract in no way is sufficient verification of debt, right? It is no way sufficient verification of debt. Now, why is this great news for you? All right. What if the original creditor, right, is the person that's trying to collect the debt from you. What if they don't sell it to a third party collection agency, right? What if, the, if it's a American Express, which I've heard American Express do not sell their debt or charge off to collection companies. They write it off as a loss, right? But you will be blacklisted. So what if it's American Express, for example, trying to collect the debt from you or charge off reporting on your credit report? Or what if it's an in-house collection company, right? You know now that a lot of medical bills have in-house collection. So it's not against the HIPAA laws anymore, the Health Insurance Privacy Portability Act, right? 
So they haven't breached your HIPAA laws by selling your medical information to a third party collector. And so now you're asking for original signed contract bearing your signature and they have it. Now what? So this is great news for you because now um, this does not give verification of debt. Now let me explain to you what the difference is between verification of debt and validation. Those words are often interchangeably misused. So to make it real simple, right? Put it in layman's term for the everyday person who doesn't study and read these things on a daily basis like I do. Validation is for your debt collectors, third party collectors. Um, as soon as you get a collection notice in the mail, right? You ask them to validate. Validation is done under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, right? Verification, if this, the collection account has already hit the bureaus, is already at the bureaus, already um, um, on your credit report. Now you ask them for verification under the Fair Credit Reporting Act because that's the bureau's language. That's what you have to ask. So when validation and validation is, is very, very different, right? When you get that letter in the mail from a collection agency, you now ask them for the validation of debt under the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. But if it's already on your credit report with Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, you ask them to um, now verify the debt under the Fair Credit Co Collection um, Act. And verification is done under codes um, 611 and 623, right? So that's number one. Number two, the second thing that really, really damages people that's trying to do it yourself, credit repair, is this, the 609 letter template, right? Let me tell you what a lot of people do in this game, this credit game. They sell you their 609 template letters, knowing that it won't work. So now you can come back to them for credit repair professional service, right? What is 609 for and what does it really do, right? The Fair Credit Reporting Act does not require a credit bureau to keep or provide signed contracts as proof of debt. That's number one. So if you're writing the credit bureaus and asking them to provide me a signed contract, they're not required to do that under law. FCRA is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. The fair credit, that's who governs them, right? To make sure they are legally reporting everything like they're supposed to on your credit report. So writing the bureaus as for signed contract proof of debt, I just showed you why it shouldn't be done anyway. But you can, however, on the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right, ask for a description of to disclose everything on your credit file to be released to you which means pretty much simply, they'll send you a copy of your credit report in the mail, according to the Fair Credit um, 609 reporting act. So you can see everything it, that's re being reported on your credit report, and you wanna be make, make sure that it's reported clearly according to 609A1A and accurately. Disclose all information on my credit file clearly and accurately. Now, if something is on there which is not reported clearly, right, uh, and, and which is mean it's a partial account number or invalid account number or something is inaccurate, then you have to ask them to verify, right? I talked about that earlier. If, if you're seeing that something is not reported accurately, then you ask them to verify. But 609 does not require bureaus to provide, provide signed contract or to even verify any debt. So this is especially damaging on your credit report because did you know anytime if you read your credit report and it states that um, this item or this account is disputed by the consumer being you, anytime you have those remarks on your credit report and you've disputed the item and you don't know how to dispute it the correct way, that damages and lowers your credit score just by having that information recorded on there. Why do you think they recorded on there, right? So this is my last three, because it's a very good basketball game. Um, 
um, Louisville, and I got to get to it. Why pay for a delete letter, this is the top three, is not a good idea, right? Why your pay for a delete letter is not a good idea. Many people tell you to send in a pay for a delete letter. Listen, the damage is already done. If it's on your credit report as a collection, right? The damage is already there. Paying it nine times out of 10 will not work and they will, will, not, will not remove that remark from your credit report. So why not know your laws on your side and, and, and instead of losing money by paying for something that's already on your credit, why don't you save that money and require the bureaus to verify that collection or their charge out their correct way? And if they send you something back, Saying it's many ways the bureaus can verify. They can verify through an address connected with it. If I was living in an address three years ago and this is where the collection happened, they can verify through an electronic system called eOSCAR, right? So you have to know how to word your letters asking them, I do not accept eOSCAR verification. And you have to know the law in which they cannot just give you an eOSCAR verification, but you want to have human eyes human people reading your credit report, right? And there are strategies and ways to get that done. So if you're just sending in templates and cookie cutter system, first of all, credit repair is not equal for anybody, for everybody, right? It is not equal. Everyone, just think about it. Everybody have different items reported different ways on their credit report. So why do you think a one size fit all letter is, uh, it's a good idea for everybody to be sending in by the billions and millions to the credit bureau, right? Because don't you know if you send in, for example, a 609 law letter requesting validation of original contract and it doesn't match, you're requesting it by according to 609, now it can be marked as frivolous because let's go back to the slide because six, session 609 is for people who, I deal, who deal with identity theft victims, right? Or fraudulent accounts or information being reported on their credit report. So now if you're disputing something according to 609 and requesting validation, your credit profile could be looked at as frivolous and you have no chance. And now you come to someone like me and die distressed to get help with your credit report. So know what you're doing if you're going to take on these tasks. Yes, I did make a comment that credit repair is just as serious as trying to do your own taxes, do tax box or something. And you're not a tax expert because you're losing that on thousands and thousands of dollars and you don't know. Well, credit, I, I take it as just as serious. It's a three-digit digit number that controls your life. And if you dispute it inaccurately and you're disputing frivolous information, and using 609 incorrect, or you're requesting validation to the bureaus when you should be requesting verification, and then verification to the collection agencies when you should be saying validation, now you won't get any help. And now you're trying to do pay for delete letters and you're losing money because you don't know the proper way to ask the collection agencies or the bureaus to verify or and or validate a debt. Save yourself money, the money that you can be you spending or sending to collection agencies, ask for pay for delete. You can get professional credit expert help um, like myself. This is my um, contact information. A lot of people ask me, what are your prices? Uh, what I do is I give you a free uh, reading of your credit report. I require that you um, send me your credit report by via email, right? Um, and I should have put that website, but I use Identity IQ platform. The website is www.bit.ly uh, forward slash credit check first. It's like www.bit.ly forward slash credit check first. Go to that website, um, get your three bureau credit report, email me. 
and then I will give you a price based off what errors and things that I see that you need removed off of your credit report. I don't have a one price fit all because, um, for example, you might have a collection showing on TransUnion Equifax and it's not showing on Experian, right? So I only have to dispute two bureaus, but that collection for somebody else may show on all three. So now I have to dispute three bureaus, which will, um, you know, variate the cost. So the question is, will you leave a legacy, right, or a liability for your loved one? Will you leave a good credit score? Use credit to build wealth. And if you need cash flow strategies, I tell people credit is 35, 35% debt to income ratio, 65% um, um, strategies. So uh, if you need money, that extra money to pay down your um, debts, right, to increase your credit score, which eight out of 10 people do that I work with, I can show you how to get a paycheck pay raise, get from anywhere from two to $500 a month so without getting a second job or working overtime. Leave a legacy behind for those who live, whether it's your grandkids, whether it's just for your name's sake, whether it's for your children, right? Your nieces or nephews, leave a legacy. Or if it's just for your, work for your, hustle for your last name, right? Not your first name, leave something of credibility behind. Hey, I'm signing our queen of credit. Uh, make sure you hit like and hit share if this was any help to you. And um, you all have a terrific Thursday. I'm signing off. Queen of Credit, Miss Coach Deloach.